What's up guys, welcome back to Calgary Barbell. We are in our second last week, uh, wrapping up War of the West training next week at my favorite barber shop. That's gonna be cool. Uh, for this week though, uh, Monday really sucked. So I did my competition squat that day. Uh, everything felt really tight, misgrooved. Like by the time I got 100 kilos on the bar, I could tell it was just kind of not gonna be my day. What I should have done was spent some extra time get a couple of extra warm-up sets in at lower weights, do multiple sets with an empty bar, those kinds of things. But what I did do instead, like the brilliant person that I am, was go up and try to hit the heaviest squat of this training cycle. So needless to say, it wasn't very good. I got pretty pitched forward. It was pretty ugly. It hurt a little bit. But uh, the volume, by the end of the volume that day, things felt a little bit better. And subsequently throughout the week, things felt better and better and better and more back to how things have felt throughout this training cycle. So uh, I think that's a really important reminder for myself and maybe something that people watching can take away is if something feels funky or off, uh, if you're one of those roll and stretch a ton people, do more of that stuff. For myself uh, and for my athletes, mostly what I advocate is just do more warm ups with the bar or with lighter weights that day until you can get to that point where you're mindful and you feel your technique and you feel your groove and everything feels like it's moving properly. Key there. Khaled key, DJ Khaled style key. Um, bench this week, like I said, Monday was a pretty off day all around, so pin presses didn't go so well. Uh, I think it hit 157 and it was more like a nine, nine and a half. Uh, volume felt really heavy on that movement that day. Progressively throughout the week, again, it kind of felt better. And then today I actually did my competition pause single, which is, was up to 165 kilos. And that was right around an eight, um, maybe eight and a half, but uh, that puts me on point to hopefully hit a bench PR. I'm projecting about 180 right now. Whether or not that's gonna be there on the day, who knows, but I'd love to get up closer to that 400 mark, 400 freedom units that is, and, uh, and take a stab at that 182 eventually. I'm thinking probably 177, 180 this meet, but. Deadlifts again, Monday sucked. Um, 357.5 and it was pretty slow. But as with everything else, as, as the week progressed, I pulled, uh, pulled 330 kilos for a nice pause single, real snappy, felt good about that one. Uh, and then I pulled a set of four at 307 and a half kilos, which was uh, sort of compounding on last week's uh, PR. So that was really good for me, really good to feel uh, like myself and snappy and quick and strong in the deadlift again. Cause up till this, up till Monday, it had been feeling exceptional uh, and getting back towards the end of the week doing some more deadlifts I'm back to being you know quite confident about my deadlift performance at, at War of the West coming up so that's a really good sign I think our question of the day today comes from Jay Kozak Justin Kozak he helped me out by typing in the phonetic pronunciation of his name thank you for your foresight Justin uh, but his, his question basically is about whether or not I ever get post-meet blues, and if so, how do I deal with them? He says he finds himself in a good rhythm up to the meet, the week of deloading before or after messes with his groove, and the month or so after things feel heavy and his form feels off. I'm wondering if I have any tips. Um, so, to answer your question, Justin, yes, I do kind of get the post-meet blues, but what I also do is I carefully plan uh, deloads for the, the week or two after the meet. So what I'll do is I'll come back into the gym, but I will intentionally sandbag stuff. If I need to, or even really, really want to miss a training session, I will. These are the times where you can sort of allow that mental energy where you would normally sort of push yourself to go to the gym, get that last rep in, you know, put the extra two and a half kilos on the bar, those kinds of things where you can let this mental energy recuperate where you can focus on things outside of the gym, have nice short sessions, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself, don't expect things to feel good. Do some stuff you don't normally do. For me, that's a lot of high bar squats, maybe conventional deadlifts, um, things like good mornings and chin-ups and more core and ab movements. Uh, and things like that can really help. Just, just take your focus off of your performance for a couple of weeks allow yourself to recuperate, spend some time with your family, with your friends, uh, go out and have some drinks, eat some good food, enjoy the weather in this case, it's just heating up, everything's gorgeous right now. Just, just sort of take advantage of that time and if you put it to use and you're mindful and purposeful about that time, 
it doesn't end up being something to get down about. Uh, talking about, you said that your deload before the meat messes with you. Now that's something that I would probably adjust. So, and that's one of the things I'm gonna talk about in the So You Wanna Be a Powerlifter series when we get to peaking and tapering, is I think a lot of people, and I think this thought has been uh, prevalent for a long time, and that's that you really, really need to dial back and you really need to like not do anything the week of the meet. I think that if you deload less and go in more like how you've been training, just adjust those couple of variables, you know, keep that intensity relatively high, dial back your volume ever so slightly, if at all. Uh, my last two or three meets, I haven't tapered at all uh, in terms of my training and my programming. It's all been the exact same throughout the training cycle up to the week of the meet. Next week, I plan to train Monday to Friday as usual and compete Saturday. What I'll do is I'll probably trim a couple of sets from the odd workout if I'm feeling beat up. I'll probably keep my intensity uh, at or slightly below target and just allow myself that tiny little bit of recuperation without just, a lot of people get away from doing the movements. And I think that you need to be doing the movements frequently if you're doing them frequently in training. Anyways, I'm getting a bit off topic here, but try to adjust your taper and that might help with the pre-meat funk in that last little week of deload there. Uh, as far as after the meet, like I said, just let yourself recuperate. Be intentional with, with your, uh, your recovery and uh, that deload portion after your meets. Anyways. That is uh, quite enough jabbering from me. Thank you guys for tuning in. Leave a like if you liked the video. Uh, if you guys have more questions for me, question of the day, I always really, really enjoy getting a chance to kind of spit at you guys about a topic. Uh, so leave those questions below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, have a good week of training, guys. We'll see you soon.